um, there are very few industries Kunal, that give you the opportunity to start as a front office associate at a hotel and become a managing director in a hotel company. This industry gives you the growth, the learning curve that no other industry can come close to. If you love what you do and it's not a job for you, the hard work happens on its own. Adab, Sasrikal. If you see a smile on my face, is because I have my brother and a very dear friend with me. And the smile is not because he's my brother or a dear friend. I love his story. Uh, he dared to dream, dared to persevere. Nothing but blood, toil perseverance, loads of sacrifices to where he is reached today. It gives me immense pleasure and joy to introduce you to my dear friend Nikhil. He is the market marketing director for Wyndham India. But enough of my introduction, Nikhil. What a pleasure. Thank you, Kunal. An absolute joy for the entire ISH to be, for you to be here. Thank you and uh, I love coming to ISF. I think uh, it's a great campus, um, great great setup that you have going here. Thank, Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you so much. And coming from you, it means a lot to us. Thank you. How's it going? <laughs> Very good. I mean, uh, I enjoyed the fireside chat uh, with the students a little earlier. Okay. Uh, some very, very interesting questions. Uh, yeah, kept me on my toes. Tell me, Nikhil, um, usually I start with early life influences. I, I will come to that. But just generally tell me, how is it going with you? What's really happening with Nikhil today? Because you are all over the place. LinkedIn is full of your stories of opening just about the length and breadth of India, all the hotels, right? So what exactly is happening? Well, um, I think uh, at Wyndham, uh, God's been kind with us, uh, firstly. And uh, I have a great team. So... Uh, both combinations really help. Uh, we've been on a growth spree, uh, like most other brands. And I think uh, it's India's time uh, to grow in hospitality. And, and uh, we are very happy to be part of that journey. So that's that's where we are. You know, when we're talking about India, right? Uh, this is my belief. And I'll ask you for your views as well. In the last four or five years, and especially after COVID, right? This whole bounce back. Mm -hmm. I'm not generally talking about the hospitality sector. This renewed energy, uh, which India has, India as a whole, right? Um, do you feel that as well? Because I kind of see it every single day, viscerally within me, and I just feel it. Do you feel that as well? No, absolutely. Uh, and Kunal, uh, the numbers do the talking, right? Yeah. Uh, 350 million middle class and growing, 800 million under the age of 30, yeah. um, the digital revolution that's happening in this country, the fintech revolution that's happening in this country, yeah. uh, all parameters are yeah. pointing in that in that direction. You're, right? So so right. You're so right. You know, the, the, the current director of SIBM is a too senior to be called a friend, but he's been a friend to me. His name is Dr. Sri Rang uh, Long time back, he told me one indicator of the economy growing. He's saying, forget everything, Kunal. You want to know how the GDP is going? I said, yeah. He's saying, just stand on the hike and count the number of trucks flying. If the frequency, in your opinion, is a lot, a lot of stuff is moving, both manufacturing and people. True. Right? And he's saying, that's one of the indicators that the GDP or the economy is kind of growing. Because either manufacturers are manufacturing and it needs to be transported or people are transporting themselves for leisure. Right? Everything that happens, it needs to come onto the road. And I thought that was such a real uh, example. And uh, I think I would say a decoded example of what GDP is all about. Right? Yeah, true. Yeah. True. You know, when we were chatting offline, I didn't know that uh, you had your early years in Oman. Talk about that. 
Well, um, childhoods are always special, right? So mm. um, I, I grew up in a in a city called Muscat in uh, Sultanate of Oman because uh, my my dad was working with uh, an organization back then in in Muscat. A uh, beautiful experience. Um, the Indian school Muscat Darset had about six thousand students, mm. uh, so it was a large campus. Um, and and uh, you know, I, when I came to India and got into hostel, I realized what a protected life uh, we had back there and how naive we were uh, in in a lot of worldly ways, actually. So yeah. And pretty much your early years were, were was in Muscat. Well, uh, primary was uh, in in Pune. Oh. Uh, and then and then uh, yeah, I tenth and twelfth was uh, Muscat. So. Um, so you had these two cities influences on you, right? Pretty much so. And at that time, Pune was different. Yeah, it was a. It still is. Yeah, I of mean, course I, it is. I, I have I a like house Pune. there, so I can tell you for a fact, right? Because I love that city for I, sure. I like Pune. Um, yeah. Probably, if not go, it's Pune once. You, once you the think sunset. so? Yeah, 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 absolutely. So nice. Yeah. So nice. Yeah. So, uh, so next time, when you want to go to Pune, I have a beautiful house there. But but let, let's just kind of go back, right? Um, do, do you have any siblings? I have a sister. Oh, you have um, a sister. And and uh, she went to OCLD, um, and and uh, my brother-in-law went to OCLD as well. So that's where they met. Uh, they now live in Dubai. And he works with preferred hotels, and uh, she's mm. actually a uh, HR consultant. So yeah, we, uh, in a way, all related in hospitality. But but, but your father had was Has unrelated, nothing, nothing to do with, to do with hospitality. Other than um, other than travel and show us the world, I guess uh, that kind of opened uh, yeah. our eyes to travel. Uh, I think it's a great industry to be in. You get to travel, you get to meet people. And how did this early influence in you for hospitality come about, or you know? Oh. Well, I think, uh, right, I think Kunal, uh, because in Muscat you had all the European colleges coming in mm. and presenting, and a lot of them were hospitality schools. Mm. Um, at one point, I wanted to become an economist, <laughs> um, but I think. Uh, the European schools brainwashed me into getting into hospitality. Got it. A um, lot of resistance at home. Hmm. Uh, hotel management con karta hai. Hmm. You know, engineering, doctorate, right. CA. Yeah. You know the normal the uh, twenty years ago yeah, jargon so that right. you would you would hear from parents. Yeah. And uh, I kept uh, digging that rabbit hole uh, till one day my dad said, you know, there's this college in Delhi. You need to give an entrance. You need to give an interview if you make it. You go there. Otherwise, you go to Symbiosis in Pune. Okay. Um, and and change your economics. And uh, change change your dreams. So uh, mm. as luck would have it, I ended up in IIT in Pune. Ah. And uh, the journey and, started and, and, there. And because of that journey, is what influenced your sister as well? Well, I I I can't answer for her, but I'm sure I had some influence hmm. um, on her getting into a. At that time, it was it's still called at the Obey, uh, the GMT, the Graduate Management hmm. Training Program. So she she was a GMT with with them uh, hmm. many moons ago. Hmm. So nice. And here you are right now, out of Pusa, right? Uh -huh. Now what? What did you do after that? So um, well, uh, we we'll take some brand names here if that's okay. Okay, of course, so, uh, absolutely. Uh, so I uh, I I didn't make it to the final round at the Obey. Mm -hmm. um, and it was called OCLD at that time, it still is. Mm -hmm. uh, I was very, very disappointed with myself. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, there's a clinical term now which is called depression, but at that time, mm -hmm. I didn't know I was going through depression. Probably a week, two weeks, um, till my dad came around and said, pick yourself up. I mean, life happens, mm -hmm. move on. And uh, I, I then made it to uh, Taj as an HOMT. Mm -hmm. uh, while it's a great program in the first two months, but really it's it's a glorified front desk associate, and that's mm. how I started out uh, mm. uh, in my career. So mm. I was uh, I started out at Taj Palace as as a front desk assistant. Mm. Interesting, and and you know as I said, what I'm kind of observing of leaders is these pivotal moments in life. For some, it's early on in the life they have encountered some aspect. In your case, let's say. Perhaps the disappointment mm -hmm. of OCLD, and then the urge, that renewal, of you know, this is not me. I can do it, and let me show to myself, and in that process, show to everyone around me 
as with people who are trusting me to do something else right absolutely i think uh, you need to be consistent in whatever you do yeah. um and there is a secret sauce yeah. and the secret sauce is hard work and that's really yeah. so so right so right yeah you know uh, nikhil even when you know when you started off your so called hotel journey i started off with aviation and in aviation it's a microcosm of everyone around right so you Absolutely. have the iam guys who are ruling the roost with marketing and sales but you have all the hotel guys who are at looking at the complete operations part of it and homegrown talent i would say like in five you know and when i was climbing up i every time i was the weakest person in the room if i would enter a room but i would come out the strongest person is because i would learn so much from everyone around and because i was persistent right i developed that knack of early disappointment every time mm-hmm. but i overcompensated with let's say uh, let me learn from you and let me learn from the other person and and they would give up and i would and i would just keep on at it until i let's say become good at what i was doing at least in that room right and when i became good I, my aspiration became better and bigger and and when i see your journey from that aspect it's exactly the same i i want you to take my view especially the younger audience see the industry knows you they know you you've been there the fact that you work with so many brands but for the younger audience um a you have done a base education but life education and the base education was completely different so take us to that journey what you just said about the weakest person in the room i think is extremely important for each one of us to recognize and and the student mindset the mindset to learn wherever you are in life is extremely important it's important to keep resetting yourself keep learning from others keep learning from life um buddha said change is constant mm-hmm. and that is the only constant mm-hmm. in our life uh, i think education mm-hmm. is a great anchor for us mm. and that's extremely important so something what you are doing mm. even even this podcast for example is educating the larger audience on on people's journeys right yes. um, every every guest you had absolutely um you and and the way you cover it um when you have the spouses and the, and you hear from the spouses uh it's a different view what the spouses have uh it's it's just phenomenal yeah. learning so i think that that piece is is important I think as a, you're so right you know everyone has a batch story right uh and in in your case let's say that OCLD aspect must have been the trigger right for the next 20 years of your life um how did you manage your career trajectory because you went from let's say an HOMT to where you are today it tells so much about a person more importantly for the younger audience to learn from this that you know what dare to dream take me through that journey what really happened so you know um i may not be liked for saying this but uh, but loyalty works both ways right and uh, it's important for you to be loyal to an organization and and vice versa right so uh, in my journey every time i felt that my learning is not at the best and i'm too comfortable in the role i have actually changed mm. my my organization um now one can say i've been lucky one can say it was hard work it was persistence but but that's really the key if if you love what you do and it's not a job for you the hard work happens on its own yeah. right and 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 you know i learn every day yeah. i mean at the end of this podcast i'm sure i'm going to come out with the learning i was interacting with your students earlier uh i thought there were some good nuggets there yeah. and and the thought process that they have is very different than how i think right so, so so i think that is extremely important and i'm going to summarize it by just saying this that it's important to keep reinventing yourself mm. it's important to keep learning other avenues mm. and that's how growth happens i mean mm. do not stick to one function do not say oh i'm i'm an fnb resource I don't want to know about front office. I'm a sales resource. I don't want to learn about marketing, but I want the S&M title mm. because it sounds fancier. Mm. If you want that title, mm. learn 
become the system specialist, become the function specialist in mm. that and put in that effort. Yeah. So, so it's like pretty much be in that 1% club and not the 99% because in that 1% is sacrifice, perseverance, that ever uh, curiosity to learn and kind of grow. Even today, you know, I tell my people and I say it with, uh, uh, I would say, humility. I'm the hardest working person I know, Mithi. Because every day in the morning, I kid you not, there's so many stuff which I don't know. I have no idea. I said, I thought I knew this, right? Yeah. And thank God for this chat GPT. I can put in, at least it gives me a right answer and yeah. I can question it and it questions me back and I question it back. And I, I would say I'm the well, biggest user to analyze myself and I'm not seeking for answers. I'm only seeking what's the alternate to this. Well, you're looking at chat GPT. I've had the answer for 18 years. It's called my wife. Ah, lovely. Excellent. Excellent. Every time you want the answer, you get it. Yeah, you Whether get you it. like it or not. Oh, you're so right. You're so right. But since you've spoken about your wife, where did you meet her? <laughs> Actually, uh, at Lemon Tree. Uh, ah. she, she was working with Patu as, as a GA. Mm. Um, and I was uh, the first unit manager. I was uh, part of the founding team. So I was uh, part of uh, the top the 10, first 10, uh, which included a dog um, and, the, and the two founders. So, so yeah, that's where I met her. Um, and uh, so Lemon Tree's given me a lot. Uh, yeah, so, right. Yeah. But I'm going to come back to her since we're speaking about Lemon Tree, right? And this was a time where, where largely there were these legacy brands. Mm -hmm. And here comes a complete disruptor guy, right? And I have tremendous respect because only for one reason, he speaks his mind, he spoke his mind at that point in time and Patu speaks his mind today and he doesn't, doesn't really care except for his guests, his business, his people and overall industry, right? Everyone else, for him, it's like no problem. Lemon Tree was ahead of its time. Mm -hmm. Right in a perhaps country where only legacy brands existed, at least in the star category. How was that journey? How how did you manage to build along with the founders such a massive brand with that kind of efficiency? Well, um, so again, I'll go back to learning, right? But when Patu uh, offered me the opportunity, um, along with um, a gentleman called Rahul. Uh, I was a revenue manager at that point of time mm. uh, with IHG and uh, I was foolish enough uh, to, to take the risk. Uh, so it's important to stay foolish, mm. stay hungry, mm. uh, like they say. Uh, and I said, you know, even, even if it doesn't work, uh, I'll go back to being a revenue manager mm. in, in a unit somewhere in Delhi, Bombay, mm. anywhere else. Mm. Uh, but, but it was a beautiful journey. Mm. Uh, and how many years was that? A little more than 12 years. Wow. Uh, and, and because uh, it was bootstrapped initially, mm. uh, you ended up doing anything and everything. Right. So, for example, for a revenue manager to understand alignment and grooves, uh, I, I didn't know it. And I was part project manager. Uh, it was the first site that was being built. Uh, I didn't know what a CAD means, or what a drawing means, for example. Um, and I would have uh, someone like Patu come down and say, you know, take off and say, you know, why is the alignment off on this? in this style and I would just write it down because I yeah, didn't know you, what you he meant. Know what do, yeah. And then I would later go to the engineering resource mm. and say, you know, what did he mean by this? Mm. Show it to me. Mm. Right. So uh, I think one key ingredient of, of staying curious and wanting to learn is, is actually been a constant with me. And I think that's another part of the secret sauce mm. that want of wanting to do something different, wanting to understand the other perspective. And, and for Lemon to Tree at that point in time to again carve its own niche. Yeah. Right? Um, how, define that brand for all our audiences. Well, you know, um, so when Patu uh, said mid market is going to grow at that point of time, and we were, a, and, and this is early 2000, uh, we were a country which was uh, luxury heavy, and you didn't have upscale, mid-scale hotels other than uh, one home grim home grim if I'm not missing a point seven five trillion dollar economy, that's it. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so there was space mm. and there was this white space, let me just say it wasn't only space, mm. it was a white space. And and he envisioned the growth of a brand then. And uh, we did quirky things. I mean we were not 
hotel hotel as such i mean mm. um we had a ponytail for example yeah yeah uh, everyone yeah all of us had ponytails and is that something just as a brand you wanted to be recognized with or well, what's with, what's the ponytail story well uh, so uh, so and he, he's probably going to kill me for saying this but uh, <laughs> he he'd gone to iit and he said you know when in iit i couldn't have a pony in, uh-huh. why can't we have a pony now um but of course um, so he was writing his own playbook he was writing his own playbook uh but being a hotel company we we made a sop of what the length of the pony should be how should it be tied and so, and so forth so yeah. so yeah i mean uh, it, it you know the idea was to have fun yeah um along with work maverick and, entrepreneur quirky entrepreneur i love it i love the story so that's how the pony came along i mean um, and, and is it still a signature well i don't think it's carried on oh, okay. but yeah i mean some of them still have the ponies uh, but it's not So so, so 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 perhaps people who had joined at that point in time they were maintaining had their had tradition a, of the pony I, I had a pony till almost 12 years seriously yeah yeah and i had a, so you had to grow your hair or is it like a just a pony or is like a complete was, your um, hair is grown like i said there was a recipe of where to grow your hair from uh, i love it what should, what should what's the adequate length 3 so nice. centimeters and so on and so forth and how it should but be but it also tells you the culture right the culture no, was was fun yet professional yet right come and experience hospitality where it matters the most you know yeah absolutely let's I mean, not get too serious about it yeah yeah i mean uh, including the fun stuff that we did i mean uh, you know the tray mats for example mm. we 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 put calvin and hobbs and and so on and so forth mm. and it was a big hit i mean uh, we put uh, miniature t-shirts with sayings in mm. in the washrooms and and you know when somebody's taking a tickle um just reading that gave them a tickle so yeah i mean uh, a lot of uh, different things that we did back then tell coming to your beautiful wife i met her as well you know that tell me how much sacrifice pushni she has to do every day yeah to ensure that you are successful so kunal i think uh, i wouldn't be where i am if it wasn't for her undivided attention sacrifice mm. um in my role and in in my previous roles as well i i travel 120 140 days a year 160 mm. days a year mm. um long she keeps it together and she keeps it together she keeps it together and you know what she keeps it together it's so beautiful and this is the amazing thing about indianness and our mothers our wives our sisters any lady who has touched our lives and i always try to quote this someone was asked how do you define men and this beautiful farmer said from women she keeps it together i mean uh, yeah. like i said i wouldn't be where i am without without her um, and and that too it's her own personal sacrifices she had her dream right she gave up her career and she gave up her career she for the children career. for you it's amazing right it's just you know as i said if india is growing and as much as we say right and i completely disagree with anyone and anyone can argue with me on this okay we have more men participating in the workforce as so men are participating in the goddamn workforce because the women are allowing it to happen absolutely they are staying home to ensure that chula is burning no one talks about their involvement in agriculture right they are the ones who are actually toiling the sand with that male farmer but there is no mention of them the the school the studies and i'll tell you one more aspect what the government has kind of done and this is after the direct beneficiary which has happened mm-hmm. there was a conversation within the government i'm not sure they implemented it or not th- i think they did was instead of the direct beneficiary being the male member of the family let the direct beneficiary be the female okay, yeah. member of the family a they did it, by, they did it right by virtue of the fact a she'll be much more judicious with her money but more importantly because she is a caregiver and a nurturer right she's not her first priority will be her bachcha's education health and all those things right so it and we just don't celebrate that aspect enough yeah you know there are these statistics right you know what a women participation is less than bangladesh i don't agree at all 
I think this it, India is standing is because of the women's participation in all aspects. If the man is standing, is because that woman is standing beside him for him to stand. Absolutely. I truly, truly, no, absolutely. viscerally be, believe in this. I, I, right? I can't agree more. And, can't and, agree more. and also I'll tell you, I, and I've, I've met, this is my quest right now. There is this true podcast, but in the last four, five, seven years, I'm, I just want to see the whole aspect of, I don't know whether you heard about it or not, but the management books of the 80s and 90s that leaders are born. You know, I couldn't understand at that point in time, but internally I said, not possible. How can leaders be born? Right? Human beings are born. Circumstances make them leaders or, or their own perseverance. But I couldn't articulate it. Right? A, yeah. I was growing up. Nobody would listen to me either at that point in time. But I said, let, let me find this for myself. And I started this about seven years ago and I'm articulating it through this podcast. In all, And about 200, 300 leaders that I have met and asked these very specific questions. And all of them have started somewhere. Mm -hmm. They could come from a privileged. Most have come from a not so privileged. Right. And they have picked themselves up. Every time they fell and every time they fell, every time there is the mother, there is the wife yeah. and there is a sister who picked them up and says, move on. Yeah. Right. Very and, true. And, 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 and it's so evident. It's not going to stop here. Let me see where it goes. But I'm definitely going to publish this book. Uh, the working title is From Women. Yeah. You know, to, 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 to celebrate. Uh, and it, there is a backstory to this. I'm sorry, the interview. No, it's that's, all about that's, it's amazing what it's, you're saying. It's, it's about my mother. And we grew up very poor in Bombay. Right. I am super proud of it. That we grew up very poor in Bombay. My mother. And I came from a dysfunctional family background and all those things she would make a bar of soap in a washing machine wow. the top loading and uh, uh, I don't think it was a branding washing machine and she would sell that she would make idli batter and sell that for a profit wow. right and maybe a raw material was one rupee and the profit must have been one rupee and she sold it at two rupees I saw that lady doing because she won't allow her two boys to fail or fall and cook for you and everything. Make sure and she was a homemaker, care. poor lady. But that entrepreneurship, she no YouTube, nothing. We didn't have nothing, subsistence level. But she did that. And I'm looking at that and I'm saying, how can leaders be born? Yeah. Look at that leader in the making, at least for me. You know? Very inspiring. Yeah. And and it was very inspiring for me. And I and the day she died. I'm sorry, I'm taking a long time, right? Oh, okay. And the day she died, I didn't cry. And I said, you know what? A, she's here. So she's never dead. But more importantly, keep a bedside ready for me when I die. Right? I want to be rest in eternal peace with my mom. Wow. Nothing more beautiful than that. Wow. Right? But uh, wow. sorry, little, you know, at, at this age, you get a little teary eyed, moist eyed yeah. as well. Yeah. But the, I'm, I'm glad and you bring that out in me, Nikhil, no, seriously. Um, after elementary, where did your journey go? So I moved from elementary to uh, Jinja, mm -hmm. um, which is IHCL. Mm -hmm. And um, the objective was to redefine Jinja, to revive Ginger, mm -hmm. uh, like another uh, Tata product which mm. was launched uh, at a similar time when ginger was launched, which was a commodity. Um, ginger needed to, let's just say, yeah. get a breath of fresh air Correct. and reinvent Completely itself. Completely reinvent itself. So right. I was part of that journey mm. um, and... Uh, and was, took it to dizzy heights. Uh, well, I was enjoying... I, again, it, it doesn't happen without the organization. It doesn't mm. happen without a great team. Mm. Uh, blessed to have both. Mm. Um, and, of course, senior leadership willing to bet the buck hmm. on on you and so and you turned around the asset completely well uh, again it was a team of course it, of it course wasn't me absolutely i, I was I, i've been part of that journey yeah uh, beautiful journey i was very happy content hmm. um, and uh, wasn't looking for a change um but uh, but at that point of time this opportunity at Brindam came up 
Tell me something, Nikhil. If I just go a little off chart, in your mm. definition, what is the definition of a brand? Let's say a brand IHCL or a brand, let's say lemon tree or a brand today Wyndham, yeah. right? But we are going to talk about Wyndham later. Yeah. But what is that definition of a brand? How are brands built? Emotion. Yeah. Right. I mean, if you look at a, and we'll talk off hotels because it's easy to, right? If you look at a Nike ad, for example, right? Nike is not selling a shoe. It's actually selling an emotion. Mm. They never show you how good the shoe is mm. or how much cushion it has, right? Mm. Um, all brands, whether it's Apple, whether it's Nike, whether it, it's... It, it also sells winning. It also right? sells winning. It, it means move your, sorry to say, asterisk, asterisk, but ass and just be out there. Just do it. By virtue of that, you're in the 1% club. Just, just do, do it. it. Right? So, band is emotion. I also, my, my own sense is it's emotion and the trust. So that yeah. that goes without saying, right? Yeah. I mean, um, if the trust in the customer is not there, mm. and if you don't deliver on your service expectation, yeah. you'll die, yeah. right? So you need yeah. to be green and growing, otherwise yeah. you'll be... I think the loyalty kind of comes from the fact that if I've trusted your brand, I know it for a fact, you know what? Whether it's a consumer brand or whether it's, let's say, a hotel-centric brand or a hospitality brand, aviation brand, is I have... A, given my money to you and I trust you. Right? Or I've given my time to you and I trust you. And that trust, and it takes decades. Um, and in, in the case of a lemon tree, I, if I go back as a consumer, right? Mm -hmm. as a, so, so when you were building lemon tree, I couldn't afford any other hotel to stay personally. So I used to stay at lemon tree, right? And I love it. The, I don't know what's it called. Is it the lemon tree Amarante? Yes. Amarante? Yeah. Amarante Beach Resort. Go on. By any angle, for me, at least at that point in time, it wasn't budget at all. It was a gorgeous, it continues to be a gorgeous hotel. Excellent F&B, uh, even at that point in time, right? Uh, so, the aspect that in, okay, to the un industry, there are these categorization of hotels. Sure. But from a consumer perspective, right? Yeah. For me, that was five star. As yeah. five star as five star could be. Yeah. How, how does... This aspect gets built. And again, this is for our non-hotel audiences, our younger audiences. So the aspect, um, you know, I mean, today people people uh, keep coming to me and saying the hotel industry is too expensive, mm. right? Uh, rooms are too expensive. But travel in general has got expensive. Mm. Customers are okay paying for a higher A fare, mm. but they're not so happy paying for a higher room fare. Mm. Why is that? Mm. Right? Um, but just compared to last year and this year, I'm seeing the pivot. Mm. People are now more accustomed to paying higher mm. because the airfares are far higher. Correct. Right? I mean, a Delhi Bombay flight and the frequency is, yeah. is the highest. Correct. Right? Just as a sector Absolutely. Uh, across the country. Yeah. Uh, fares are crazy. Yeah. Do you also believe that airfare people are traveling because largely it is corporate sponsored? Right. But but of course, there is a correlation between a corporate sponsor travel and his stay. But generally in India is a leisure stay mm -hmm. as well. And that's where an Indian sees value for money. And the the general, I would say, a household income mm -hmm. may for them allow them to kind of stay at a certain level. And hence for them, they're more looking at that VFM aspect. So India will continue to be a VFM and Kitana milega. Correct. Uh, you know. Uh, ke ek room mein char din sula sakte ya nahi. It's in our genes. It's sure. Right? So, sure. it's in our DNA. Uh, yeah. You can't take that away. Yeah. It's it's the way we've been brought up. Mm. It's the way culturally we true, are. True. Right? And and I think for global brands, the, the big learning is how you localize mm. and how do you give better value for money mm. and what are the add-ons you can give on mm. uh, to your services. Mm. And, and you see that. Uh, you see that with various brands going into... F&B space, mm. social spaces, and so on and so forth. You won't get the same, even the same product globally that you have in India, right? The service levels uh, are very Asian and not very mm. American or European from that standard. So, yeah. so that's that's important for us to uh, categorize. So, so you are heading a global brand now here in India, right? Um, if I kind of look at that or any of your past experiences, do global brands understand the Indian ethos? Right? Do they understand the Indianness? You know what? 
I truly feel there is no other country like India in the world. Which is true. Just cannot happen, right? Which is true. You you touch anything, it's like completely different. It's a continent, and by it's a continent, you know, every city is different. Uh, every aspect, culture, food, everything. Hawa same hai, dil same hai, everything else is different, right? How, do, because A, they come with, and I'm talking about any brand, right? Sure. Be, and my own sense is, until you don't adapt yourself to this Indianness. Yeah. It's unique. There, as I said, there is no playbook. You've got to rewrite your playbook. Absolutely. Hindustan, Unilever has done that. Procter & Gamble has done that. You know, so many brands uh, tried, but then adapted to the Indianness. Today, McDonald's has kind of done that. I'm talking about in the QSR space. Of course, the KFC, they have done that. Do, um, large aviation brands could not, but eventually they either wound up, right? And, and the, the other guys have survived. What do you think about the hotel brands? Have they adapted to that? Indianness? I think um, most international hotel companies have gone global. While they've had the global DNA, mm. they've regionalized and, and that is the, the reason of our success. Mm. If you do not regionalize, if mm. you do not become more Indian, mm. um, there is no way you will have the acceptability and the trust. Mm. Right? So uh, each, each market is very different. right? Mm. And it, it is similar for Nepal. It is similar for uh, and and global brands have been doing this in every market they enter. Do they hyper local it the way they do it the, for India? The degree in India today is higher mm. than in other markets because because the base of travel um, and and it's very important to understand the mix. Right, we are ninety five percent plus domestic travel within the country. Mm. We are not getting as much as inbound as we should as a country, for mm. example, mm. right? And now one can say there are various reasons, we don't need it, so on and so forth. Mm. But I think every country needs inbound. And I think that's an area of opportunity for us uh, to grow because um, there are other countries in the Middle East, in, in Southeast Asia, that are growing just on basis of inbound tourism. And that's yeah. an important piece uh, to culturally not only integrate Correct. But showcase the great culture this country has. Absolutely. Offer, right? so, and I think, you know, that when when India is ascending in its economy, that influence, when you when you bring in, let's say, the world into India, right? Either through conferences, we just saw the G20 happening, or perhaps leisure. Our, our export is our vibrancy and our culture. Yes, it is. Right? Yes, it is. And for that, you need to experience us in our homeland. If that doesn't happen, right? You know what? We'll be in TV channels just talking about it. India, they go, kaisa hai, yaar, ye hai, wo hai. But come and experience. Yeah. And I, I, you know, I've traveled. You've traveled all over the place. And I, I've been very, very lucky because of my aviation that I've traveled multiple times. Over. But this uniqueness, Jesus, what do you see in India, right? Uh, every 200 kilometers. I, I'm not talking about the topography. I'm not talking landscape. I'm just talking about every aspect changing. Like if you go to, uh, honestly, to Europe, one city to the third city, there's no difference. Kunal, the hospitality in this country is unique. Yeah. Right? And and we need to showcase it to the world. Yeah. And the only way we can showcase it is by getting the inbound tourist. Yeah. And I, and, and you're doing that with Wyndham right now. A, first, please tell me you're, Pretty much in every city, at least what I'm reading all over LinkedIn, right? And well, in my conversation, yeah, you are, you are. I wish we growing, were growing, but yeah. No, at least what I'm reading, it's it's growing leaps and bounds. A, how, and B, just give us a sense of Indian hospitality for our audiences. So um, we have 24 brands globally. Uh, we've got nine brands. Ramada is a hero brand in this mm. part of the world. Uh, it has three. Three tiers, but we have been growing the other brands, the Howard Johnson Days, mm. uh, Ramada Encore. We've added on Wyndham Garden, which is above uh, a Ramada, and uh, we've brought our mother brand Wyndham into the country in, in two cities uh, in Ahmedabad and Mohali. Mm. And and as we speak right now, we are in launching uh, two luxury properties in the mm. process uh, yeah. between this year and next year called Wyndham Grants. Um, and they're going to be in the beautiful state of Rajasthan, in Udaipur and Jaipur. So I think uh, that really just showcases um, Indian hospitality. Mm. Um, 
So we are, I wish we were in more than 41 cities. We are in 41 <laughs> cities at the moment. Uh, we go to 51 by the end of this year, 61 operating. Mm. Uh, we go to 74, 75 hotels by the end of this year. So just India, India. Uh, that's the And, and Nikhil, what is the basis of, let's say, you know, choosing a city? Uh, apart from the tourist aspect, but yeah. the other cities. Is it because now there is better infrastructure so that people can travel and people want to explore and you want to be in that city? So Kunal, uh, the reality is every hotel company is a growth company. Mm. And every hotel company is a reactive hotel company. Okay. Right. Nobody is proactive. Got we it. will go where the money is. Got it. Um, if somebody is setting up a hotel in Gorakhpur. Got it. You will have various brands mm. vying for it. Mm. Um, That's a good thing and a bad thing. The, it's a, the, yeah, yeah no, absolutely. It it's a, no, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, um, uh, but the infrastructure mm. and the growth of infrastructure, the roads, mm. the airports, I mean, from 70 airports to 150 mm. and Mm. Uh, another 50 additional airports coming in mm. are all aiding um, travel in this country. And, and when you have 350 million middle class, you have 800 million under the age of 30. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, travel is a basic human need. Mm -hmm. they, it, the, the thing is that, and, and, and it is going to continue. And mm -hmm. I think Ayodhya is a great example, for example. The first trip that Indians actually make as a holiday Interestingly, our research shows it's spiritual tourism. You're so right. So it right. is not to a Goa. Yeah. It is not to a hill. It's, it's it is religious to tourism. a religious yeah. destination. It yeah. could be Tirupati. It could be Katra. Yeah. It could be Dwarka in Gujarat. Yeah. Uh, it could be Ayodhya. Right. So, so you need to understand uh, the essence. Um, the beauty of it is they are not extremely high ADR markets, mm. but it's a recession-proof market. It's like education. Got it. You're so right. But but tell me. See, I come from an aviation industry and we look at market very differently, right? Uh, sure. So we are more proactive Load in the capacity, sense. Yeah. yeah, of course. A, the fact that if there is an industry there and let's say there is an industry coming 200 kilometers away from there. Uh, is there enough cargo, right? Uh, are, how are people traveling? What are the train connectivity there, right? Uh, just imagine a particular station long time back. It, the train would take out, let's say, 500 people from that particular station. Yeah, right? Debrugar. Or Debrugar or something. Yeah. But you know, there is still another 200 and you know, cargo does not reach there. So all these aspects, mm. uh, aviation takes into consideration and then does its uh, uh, viability towards that sector. Uh, are hotel companies also doing the same thing? So let me just change tracks here because mm. I think there is a big change in India from then to now, mm. right? And I think the digital digitalization of this country and data being so hmm. inexpensive in this country and, and, hmm. and, and some of the facts that uh, while males still dominate hmm. the internet space, hmm. uh, women in the next two years will start dominating the internet space. Beautiful. And and the growth in, in the internet in India is not coming from the urban markets, it's coming from the rural, rural markets. Market. So the aspiration in the rural market hmm. is very different. Hmm. It is as it is what it, I mean, 15 years ago, somebody in Bareilly was at least he, he, his news was more i would say stale news stale right or your say uh, than somebody in delhi and yeah, bombay yeah, right yeah. i mean uh, today the aspirational is quality real time is real time live feed. is the same as you and me yeah so right and and there is money in these markets yeah. it's not that you know uh, the money is only in the metros mm -hmm. the the real growth in this country is actually coming in tier 2 tier 3 tier 4 cities and we have 40 hotels and 41 hotels in the pipeline so you're pretty much looking at that as a as, as a thing and say, you know what, let me take that uh, uh, punt today because you know that. So so pretty much uh, you're forecasting the demand in that city much in advance because a, the asset takes about two to three years to build as well. Absolutely. 60% right? of that pipeline is there because mm. that's where the growth is, right? Mm. Um, everyone wants to go to a nice hotel. Everyone wants to do a nice, so right, yeah. nice Shadi in a nice hotel you know, in their and, own city. And you know, there is, you know, to the students, and this is something which we often say, is you can earn in pharma, you can earn in engineering, you can earn as a tech, you can be a doctor and earn in being a doctor, but you all spend in hospitality. Absolutely. Right, that is one <laughs> greatest equalizer. Your spends are always in hospitality. Right. So when to your point, when when our villages are growing, when when our farmers have more money and when they say Bareilly has more money, I'm sure it has, but assume it has much more than today because we are all ascending. It's just going to be hospital. So those people will travel more in India because 
they will explore India and the Indians who have people who have already explored perhaps may explore out right uh, so so either ways so, we are influencing so my theory is Anji. right first level spiritual travel Anji. second level it's either Goa or a hill station of course something close to you hmm. one night hmm. right third level when Indians have a little more money it's Dubai, Singapore, Thailand, yeah. and now Vietnam. So, yeah. what, I, what I Bali as well, right? Bali, yes. because of the direct flights yeah. now. That's so, happening. So, really, Greater India. Yeah. That's where Indians are traveling out in holes. Yeah. And and of course, as as they evolve, they will travel to other countries. I yeah. love that. You know, and some aviation traffic said, if I, but I'm not sure about it. I need to verify that. It's pretty much one in every four global traveler is an Indian. Wow. On the global network is an Indian. That's the power of influence this country is exerting today. Wow. Today, when you kind of reflect back or when you look forward mm -hmm. in your own mind, mm -hmm. where is Nikhil five years from now, ten years from now? Professionally, I, I know and may God bless you that you become the president of Hotels India and you have that uh, in you. But otherwise, um, Spiritually, interestingly, where is Nikhil? Uh, so, Kunal, um, this this year in in Jan, I went for a ten day vipassana hmm. and uh, beard. <laughs> yeah, beard. I love it. <laughs> um, and and I'll I'll tell you what vipassana is uh, for the audience. Um, it's the oldest form of uh, Buddhist meditation. So, Gautam Buddha uh, attained enlightenment at the age of thirty five. Until the age of eighty, he taught. Uh, Vipassana, which is which is meditation, um, and it is it's, it's in its purest form, right? Um, it, it's it's the Buddhist form of meditation. So for ten days, uh, you stay away from your family. You stay in a in a kind of a monastery. Hmm. Uh, you can't speak for ten days. You can't read. You can't write. You get up at four in the morning, and you start meditating from four thirty. Hmm. Of course, there are breaks in between. And you're doing that almost till nine in the night, right? Um, and one of the things that it's is given back uh, to me is to be here now. And mm -hmm. and I think those those words hold a lot of value. Um, I, I'll tell you one change. For example, I would even while having a conversation earlier, I would try and multitask and mm -hmm. answer something on the phone, look at my phone, and so on and yeah. so forth. Um, the one change in those after those ten days is the phone's not so important for me, right? I mean, if we were having this conversation last year, hmm. my phone would have been on this table, for example. I got it. Right? It's in your office today. That's that's the big change, if you ask me. Um, I think. Uh, and how has it helped you? I think I'm content. I'm hmm. happy. Hmm. Um, I I recognize. Um, the one thing that we spoke about change. So, for example, um, uh, my dad's currently in hospital. Um, he's been in the hospital for the last seven days. Oh, I'm um, so sorry. No, no, that's fine. I mean, he was in the ICU, so I wasn't really sure if I'm going to make it. But oh. he's moved to a room just yesterday. I mean, I, I'd, I'd resume oh, I'm, work. I'm, I'm so sorry. No, no, but but uh, but that's life, right? Like you have to carry on uh, to your point. Um, and uh, I, of course, I'd resume work three or four days ago when we knew he's slightly less critical. Uh, but yeah, I mean, life goes on, and it's important to to be in the moment, uh, to to live today, right now. So, so I, I I heard this very beautiful thing. You know, I'm consuming so much of our podcast, for, and right from I don't mind naming. I love this guy, Ranveer. Right, I love Rajshamani's. I love Mukesh Bansal. So, if you are listening, and please big shout out to all of you. Uh, and someone, I don't know which podcast was this, and someone said, life is only about two and a half things and not even three. And the host asked him, two and a half bus? He said, ah, two and a half bus. He said, what is that two and a half? He's saying a healthy body, mm -hmm. eight hours of sleep, and everything else in between is half. <laughs> you see, the point is that you show up every day for 12 years between K and 12. That's all that matters. That discipline takes you in life. You need to be there every day at 8 o'clock, leave at 4 o'clock. What happens in between is up to you, but that discipline, just show up. So as much as Nike says, just do it. Education is just show up, 
everything else will follow because your peers will take you along with you. Good, bad, all aside, right? But they will just take you along. So that is education. Beautifully put. Yeah, so nice. Beautifully put. So, Mr. Nikhil, I have some rapid fire for you. Oh, wow. Okay. So, can't be very long answers. At best, I'll give you 30 seconds. Okay. Right? Okay. And whatever comes to your mind. And this part has no edits. Yeah. One gadget you can't travel without. I, it used to be uh, a Kindle. But I've gone back to physical books. Ah. Oh, okay. So, let me... I, I, I extensively use my Kindle because I switch between books. Uh, I, do, I switch as well, yeah. but I, I read two to three books at the same time. Yeah, me too. But um, I, I'm getting disciplined to try and when I'm traveling, just carry one. Carry one? Yeah, so nice. Okay. The best piece of advice you have ever received? Uh, from my dad, um, you know, when you get hit hard, get up and walk off. Love it. A hobby you have picked up during the pandemic. Perhaps you were not doing before that. Well, I, I started writing extensively. I wrote a book during the pandemic. Oh. It's called Rumi and Kabir Consulting. Nice. Uh, it's available on Amazon. So that's my sales pitch. Okay. Uh, I should call you for a book reading session now. I didn't know that. I'm so sorry. I should have done <laughs> no, my No, no, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. And yeah, I, I continue to write. I, I try and write an article a month um, on, related to hospitality. It's uh, it's on a newsletter on LinkedIn. So yeah. Oh, it's got so, about so I also do that, but, uh, but maybe not once a month, but I happen to do one article, you know, whatever is uh, in my head, I do that. So Consistency. Yes, sir. <laughs> One sustainability practice you wish all hotels would adopt? There are uh, plenty actually. Um, but I think one should be uh, no plastic. If we can just get that basic right, uh, we can go along. Everything way. else will follow. The most memorable feedback you've received from a guest? Oh, wow. Most memorable feedback? Um, you're amazing. Ah, <laughs> lovely. Anyways, you're an amazing guy. <laughs> You've traveled all over the world, sir. Favorite city for a staycation, vacation, and why? Uh, India or abroad? You choose. Well, in, in, in India, it'll, it'll be between Udaipur and Goa. Mm -hmm. um, internationally, um, tough choice, but uh, I, would, I, would, uh, I would pick a Bali and I would pick uh, probably Paris. And when you hang up your boots, it'll either be Pune or Goa or uh -huh. both. Am I right? Or both? both. Excellent. Given the weather. Nikhil, early bird or a night owl? Early working? bird. Yeah. Early bird. I mean, uh, I love my mornings. Uh, I used to run marathons uh, till till COVID. I've done about 30 of them. I've done a few fulls. Uh, so Discipline, that, consistency again. Yeah, but uh, I, I stopped running. Mm -hmm. um, I, I still jog, but I don't run. Uh, but I got into yoga and meditation and, and that's what I do that's something in the morning. Excellent. All right. This is controversial. The one dish you can't resist of your mother. Butter chicken. And of your wife? Uh, dal makhani. And who cooks dal makhani better? Your mother or your wife? My wife. <laughs> <laughs> I have to go back home. <laughs> now, since you're also an avid reader like me, right? Which is that one book or multiple books or any book for that matter, right? That has influenced your leadership style. Influence my leadership style. Um, I think uh, it keeps evolving, hmm. um, and and there are multiple books. Kunal, I, hmm. I can't, can't zero down on one. I can't zero down on one if you ask me. But do you? Okay, let me rephrase the question. Do you, do you think books can influence your thought process? Absolutely. I hmm. so I mean, out of the three books, for example, hmm. um, I, I don't read fiction. Hmm. Right, they're all non-fiction. Yeah. Right, so. It's usually a, a biography or autobiography that I'm I'm currently reading, yeah. right? Um, in fact, I've just picked up a fiction. So every now and then mm. I'll pick up a fiction, which mm. Uh, mm. just just as a just uh, to just as a browse, just as a browse yeah. to yeah. you know light reading, you know. Yeah. It's nice to time yeah. pass, but yeah, yeah I mean, um, I, I I love reading poetry as well. So it's for 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 most people, I I do a lot of heavy reading. So yeah, I mean, um, I. My go-to would be biographies. You know, we espouse hospitality today as a very liberal hospitality, very akin to how you have liberal humanities, right? Because A, the fact that such breadth 
of subjects in hospitality with an overlay of hoteliering mm -hmm. we teach um, to those younger audiences listening to you what would you tell them about hospitality education because some of them like us we were still thinking of very traditional the commerce but i don't know what to do mm. or humanities but because i don't know what else to do what would you tell them about hospitality two or three things one it's a great industry mm. um you get to travel you get to meet people uh and if if you're social you'd love it um there are very few industries going on that give you the opportunity to start as a front office associate mm. at a hotel and become a managing director mm. in a hotel company this industry gives you the growth mm. the learning curve that no other industry can come close to so i yeah. think uh so true it's it's a beautiful industry um i wouldn't do anything else in the world and and yeah i'd encourage more and more people to join this industry jesus my next question was if you were not a hotelier what would you have been and actually i i would have been an economist Are you uh, I, i i love uh, reading about economies and mm. and and you know just how how it happens but uh, but my first love is hotel eating last question what is your leadership style collaborative excellent i started this podcast by saying i love this man i am sure thousands of you and my industry colleagues will resonate with me that uh there is this genuine childishness naivety but genuineness warmth and all heart uh about nikhil i thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed this conversation um he's a beautiful man i'm just going to sum it up all heart nikhil how was your journey kunal thank you for having me really appreciate it and thank you so much for being here thank you god bless thank you Thank you.